one step beyond. If this were a TED talk in the 19th century, then you'd be sitting there, all dressed up, just like you are now, and you've probably come here by a horse-drawn carriage. And then in that 19th century theater, a guy like me, who will be talking to you about a new invention, a breakthrough technology. It's like a steam engine on wheels, a horseless carriage, Let's call it auto, automobile. Chances are that I would be booed off stage. People would shout their concerns. I mean, this side of the room, this would go like, what about the jobs? What about all the people who are taking care of our horses? What about them? And on this side of the room, people would go like, it's not safe. <laughs> An engine on wheels? It's out of control. This is our relationship with technology. First, we don't quite understand it, and we are programmed to fear it. In fact, I don't know if you're aware, but around the turn of the 19th century, there was actually a law in many countries that said that if an automobile would drive on the public road, at least two mechanics needed to be in the vehicle, and there should be one person in front carrying a red flag. <laughs> I'm not kidding. <laughs> As a warning. It's true. It sounds silly, don't you think? I mean, we all know how this story played out. I mean, we can't imagine a world without cars. Flash forward, 2017. We're back in the theater. You're looking awesome, by the way. And a guy like me is here on stage talking about a breakthrough technology, a new invention, machines that can think for themselves. We should call it artificial, artificial intelligence. And again, people have concerns. This side of the room, <laughs> what about the jobs? <laughs> what about all the people that used to sit behind the computers? What about them? And you guys, you would say, it's not safe. Machines that make decisions, it's out of control. It's a black box. I'm here to tell you that in 20 years from now, we won't be able to imagine a world without artificial intelligence, without AI. Will it be easy? No, it won't. Will we make it work? Yes, we will. So in my talk, I'd like to talk a little bit about these concerns. First, I'll talk about safety, no worries. Then I'll talk about the jobs, and I will end with what I call unexpected consequences, the side effects that new technology tends to have. So let's start with safety, right? Why are we so afraid of artificial intelligence? Well, I think it's because the concept of AI is so hard to grasp that we tend to base our view on what we've seen in Hollywood movies, right? And we all know how these movies go. It's like machines are getting smarter and smarter. They're doing a lot of work for us. And then they'll make us obsolete. Then they'll become so smart that they'll even become self-aware. Then the revolt, machines taking over, robocalypse. Or as some warn, AI is humanity's last invention. Now, as tempting as this may sound, <laughs> I have to say, outside of Hollywood, not a very likely scenario. I mean, just look at the pace of the technological progress. I mean, the whole race between man and machine, it started in the end of the 80s. I mean, Gary Gasparov playing chess against a chess computer and losing to Deep Blue. Then, 20 years later, 
we were able to learn a computer or a set of algorithms to play Go. Now, I have to say Go is infinitely more complex than chess, but hey, it's still a board game. And last year, the grandmaster from South Korea, Lee Sedol, was beat by a set of algorithms. Now, to say that another jump <laughs> of 20 years and then automatically out of these very algorithms, some more computing power and some data, automatically some comes something as chemically complex as self-awareness. That's not computer science. I think that's science fiction. As my friend, the data scientist said, he said, you know what? AI is not magic. It's just math. I'm not saying that these that we shouldn't worry about these doomsday scenarios. Now, I, I think it's important to talk about safe implementation of new technology. So what can we learn from the automobile industry? Well, of course, the key word then is regulation. I mean, in, in, when, with the introduction of the automobile, we came up with better traffic laws. People had to get their driver's license. We came up with traffic lights. And if that all would fail, we'd always have insurance. Right? Now, how about AI and regulation? Well, I think Europe is leading the way. The new GDPR legislation, the General Data Protection Regulation, is a big step forward. These were dubbed the privacy laws, and we thought, that's going to be a hassle. It's a blessing in disguise. Suddenly, big organizations, large institutions are talking about the ethical implications of automated decision-making, about transparency, uh, responsibility, about explainability, and most importantly, the question of this time, how can we hold algorithms responsible, accountable, and is there still a human being in the loop? This brings me to the, to the job concerns. Why are we so afraid of artificial intelligence? Why do we think that it'll eat up our jobs? Well, I think this underlying assumption is that technology is good for productivity, but bad for jobs. This is called automation angst, or the Luddite fallacy. Well, all across history, this theory, in the long term, has been proven wrong. In fact, the MIT economist David Otter in his TED talk last year, points out that across all of history, throughout all these innovations from agricultural, industrial, automation, IT, work has created work. And right now, there are more people than ever active on the job market, despite of all this technological innovation. So why should this time be different? Look at the car industry. The people who used to work in the stables went on to work in the car factories. The automotive industry created millions of jobs, a lot of economic growth. And the people who used to carry the flag, well, they became accountants. <laughs> I love accountants, by the way. And this brings me to the third part of my talk, the unexpected consequences. Because you know what the biggest problem was that the automobile solved? It was horse manure. In New York City alone, there were 100,000 horses back in the day, producing 1,200 metric tons of manure on a daily basis. There were not enough people to clean it up. It was literally a shitty situation. <laughs> the smell was horrific. And that all changed with the introduction of the automobile. Another side effect of the car was that it freed us. It freed us from geographical limitations. Suddenly, you didn't have to work in the same city or village where you were born. AI will do the same. It will create new markets, it will create new jobs, and it will turn out to be a solution to a problem we didn't even know we had. Turns out, the more we learn about artificial intelligence, the more we become aware of our inner robot. We don't have to be scared about external robots. We have to be scared of our inner robot. I mean, humanity, have we come this far that our average day 
is being in a very awkward <laughs> position behind a screen more, for more than three or four hours a day, clicking through screens, finding information in one system, and then typing it into another? That's not a very human work. That's a robot's work. Just like Microsoft Excel freed us from doing bookkeeping on paper, AI will free us from Excel. <laughs> yes! A standing ovation. No, 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 don't worry, no. <laughs> but it sounds good, doesn't it? Yeah. I mean, humans are best at being human. AIs will do the rest. Why? Because AIs are great at number crunching. AIs are great at predictive modeling. AIs will do the heavy lifting for us so that we become more human. The only ones who will be jobless are the ones who don't pick up this new technology that is handed to them. I think the future of AI is bright and it will affect all of us and we should work together. And trust me, we have enough people <laughs> who are waving the red flag. I'm calling on you, I'm counting on you to actually sit next to the mechanic and help him design a better, safer car. The future is not written, it is shaped by our decisions and actions today. So let's work together and use AI for good. Thank you very much. Thank you.